The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. My body just shut down. I came home from work one day, uh, been for years this 60, 70, 80 hour week, work week, and got home and had dinner with the family and noticed I couldn't really even process conversation. Wow. Went upstairs, laid down, think I'm gonna take a nap, and I slept for eight straight days. After experiencing a mental breakdown, Vance Pittman could no longer allow stress to dominate his life. Now he wants to help you find peace as well. Everybody. I'm Tammy Trent, and this is Randy Robison. And if you're joining us for the very first time, let me be the first to say welcome to Life Today. Do you ever feel stressed out? <laughs> do you ever feel filled with anxiety? Do you ever worry? Well, if you do, then you're not alone. Uh, but what do we do with that? Uh, there is a pastor that I absolutely love his teaching and his new book, The Stressless Life. He's going to help us walk through what it looks like to be free from stress. So let's talk to him about it today. Welcome, Vance. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Tammy and Randy. It's an honor to be here and Good appreciate time. you inviting me. Oh, yeah. I, I, now, so you look like a pretty chill guy. <laughs> uh, has your life always been stressless? Uh, no, it has not. <laughs> um, and I don't, uh, I definitely can't claim that testimony. Actually, the, the book was born out of my own personal journey mm. of a collapse that I went into in my own life. I um, when I was uh, in about 1999, I sensed God calling my wife and I to, and our family to a new season of ministry. We had been serving in the Bible Belt as pastor. And um, uh, one morning I was reading in Luke chapter four and Jesus made this statement. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also for I was sent for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And that day we sensed God calling us like missionaries to go to some other city some other part of the world, plan our lives to engage in proclaiming the gospel and expanding the kingdom. So we just said, Lord, yes, we don't know where, we don't know when, the answer is yes. And a couple of weeks later, a church reached out to me from Georgia and said, we feel led of the Lord to start a church in the fastest growing city in North America, Las Vegas, Nevada, and God's put it on our heart, you're to be the pastor of that church. Well, Las Vegas had never entered my my mind, wasn't on my radar. I mean, I'm from Alabama originally, and if you're from Alabama, you don't go to Las Vegas, and if you do, you don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, where I'm from, they don't think Las Vegas is hell, but they think you can smell it from there, like it's close. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what God did. God mm. moved my family to Las Vegas, Nevada in 2000 to join in his activity of starting a church. And uh, church planning is hard anywhere. It's always a difficult season, but there's also great blessing. And over the course of the first 10, 12 years, we experienced both. We experienced God's favor in unbelievable ways with a rapidly growing church that inside of three years had more than a thousand people coming from many different languages and cultures. Um, we were experiencing the, the growth and the blessing and the favor of God, but that creates all the challenges of where you're going to meet. We had to meet in nine different locations in 10 years. Uh, we had economic collapses. We had moral failures on our team. Uh, we had uh, um, the, the uh, construction problems that we ran into with uh, being in a place like Vegas. There's all kind of issues. In about 2012, church was now a few thousand people. Uh, we'd finally moved in a permanent facility. My body just shut down. I came home from work one day, uh, been for years this 60, 70, 80 hour a week work week, and got home and had dinner with the family and noticed I couldn't really even process conversation. Wow. Went upstairs, laid down, think I'm going to take a nap, and I slept for eight straight days. Um, wow. My wife finally got me out of bed, gets me to a doctor, and basically he says I had a physical version of a mental breakdown. Stress had so overwhelmed my body that mm -hmm. my body said enough, and it shut down. Yeah. I've actually, I've known other people that have, have been through that kind of thing, a physical just complete shutdown. What, what, what do you do with that? I mean, you cleared yourself medically. In other words, you, you yeah. didn't have some kind of disease. For sure. And, well, and Randy, you make an important point because anytime you write a book on a subject of stress or anxiety, you need to be very clear to say, and I am in the book, that there are medical and chemical situations that people need medical and chemical help for. Right, I believe right. in a God who can do miracles, but I also believe that God's given us the wisdom to know that if I have a medical problem that needs a medical solution, I just don't pray my way out of that. Mm -hmm. I need to let 
the wisdom of medicine speak into my life. Mm. But I had been cleared medically. I didn't have anything medical or chemical or physiological other than he just recognized that the volume, the, the way that I was dealing with the stressors in my life had led me to a very unhealthy place mm. physically, emotionally, and even spiritually to the point that my body said enough is enough. It hit a breaking point. Um, and uh, some people will even watch this and, and hear me tell this and be kind of shocked if they hadn't read the book because I don't tell this story a lot other than the book is the first time I've really told it. It's not that I'm ashamed of it. It's just that, you know, you think I should have known better. Mm. I, I should have never let myself get to that place. Well, but but that's exactly what happened to me. Well, I think that's how we get there is, is not recognizing mm -hmm. that we're going there. Yeah. You know, right. well, um, what did you do? Well, I had some people in my life uh, that kind of came around me at that time, and um, I have, I, I was kind of slow to the technology game. Uh, my kids kind of drug me into the iPhone era, and I wasn't a big fan, and uh, even when I started using the iPhone, I'd have all kind of problems, and they taught me something. They taught me what was called the hard reset, that when you have a problem with the iPhone, mm -hmm. best thing to do is turn it off, shut it down, mm -hmm. reboot it, let it come back on, and it most of the time fixes whatever it was, mm -hmm. and that works most of the time. And I had some people come into my life and basically say, we need to do a hard reset on your life. It's time to shut it down. I was traveling everywhere. I was speaking everywhere. I was pastoring our church. I was leading all the meetings. I was casting all the vision. And for nine months, um, other than some preaching, they shut everything else down on my calendar. I didn't get to go to the office. I didn't get to lead a meeting. I didn't get to hold a uh, cast any vision. I didn't raise any funds. I didn't get on an airplane, which for me is a weekly affair. Mm -hmm. um, and shut my life down to begin to reorient my life and dealing with these things a new way because Jesus offers us something different. We don't have to just endure life. We can actually enjoy the life that he's called us to. It's what he's promised us in the scripture. And for me, I'd missed out on that. I wasn't I'm not saying in what I'm saying today that as Christians, we don't, we're not going to have stressful things in our lives. We're, not, we're all going to experience stressors. Those are going to come. We can't eliminate those circumstances. As a matter of fact, Jesus even says in the last days, difficult times will come. We will have challenging circumstances. But as believers, we have the opportunity with Christ in us to experience those things and live through those things in a very different way. Mm -hmm. And that's what the world really needs to see. How do we identify stress in our life? Like, what's that thing we're looking for? How do I know, like, okay, I'm stressed out or, or maybe I'm just overthinking. Like, how does a person know, like, to the point, Pastor, where I'm stressed out, I better make some changes or I'm about to fall asleep for eight days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Uh, well, I define stress like this. It's fearful concern when life's demands seem greater than my ability to meet them. Mm. So when I have a situation or circumstance in my life, it can be physical, financial, relational, whatever, organizational. But I look to myself and say, man, I don't have the capacity to meet this need. I don't have the resource. I don't have the wherewithal to overcome this. Mm then I have two opportunities there. One is what I call in the book stress. It's fearful concern. I can't control the stressor. I can control my response to it. I can get stressed out. I can become obsessed with it. I can worry about it. It can keep me up at night. I can look to myself and say, how am I gonna fix this? How am I gonna solve this? That's fearful concern, that's stress. Okay. Genuine concern, we are to have concern. We're not yeah. to be careless people. Right. Genuine concern doesn't look to oneself and say, how am I going to fix this? Mm. Genuine concern looks to the Father Amen. and says, Lord, what are you going to do in this situation? Amen. Fearful concern leads to stress. Genuine concern, the biblical word for that is burden. And what have we been invited to do? Cast all yes. our cares on Him because He cares for us. And in the New Testament, the prescription that, that Paul gives us is to be anxious for nothing. The word anxious there is the same word that's translated worry, stress, anxiety in the scripture. It's this fearful concern. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, be anxious for nothing. And it's not a consideration for us to pray about. In the Greek text, it's an imperative, meaning to be anxious is to live disobedient mm -hmm. to the call of God on our lives. But he says, rather than be anxious, he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, 
through prayer. What's prayer? Conversation with the Father. So when that thing in my life comes up that's bigger than my ability to meet, to meet it, rather than looking internally and trying to figure it out, I begin to have a conversation with the Father mm -hmm. through prayer and supplication. That's the word pleading. It means to pour your heart out. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And here's what he says. Then the peace of God, which passes all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I can take that concern, lay it at his feet, and what he gives me in exchange is peace. Yeah. yeah. Those two don't mix, uh, stress yeah. and peace, right? Right. So, I mean, I kind of think it's one or the other. It By is. the way, I looked up the, the word that, that's translated as nothing, and in the Greek, it means Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> right? So we kind of have really no excuse. Um, yeah. when, we, when we see in ourselves, okay, I've, I'm stressed about this. Yeah. I don't have peace. Yeah. Which would be another good way to measure it, yep. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, do I just pray? Do I just write, read the Bible more? Because I know some people that are like, I prayed about it. I read the Bible more. Yeah. I whatever confessed. I, you know. There's got to be something deeper. What, yeah. did you, what did you find as you worked through this in your life? That's a great question, Randy. And it's actually a great way to think about it because what I'm not saying with this book is here are the one, two, three steps right. that you deal with and then you move on. What a lot of Christians are looking for in this arena and really as it pertains to any sin, and that's what stress is because Jesus said, don't do it. He said, don't be anxious for anything. Paul said, be anxious for nothing. Twice in the scripture, we're commanded not to do this. So it's an issue of disobedience. And, and you know this, God never said, don't do something because that something was going to bring us joy and pleasure. He said, don't do something because he knew it was going to hurt us. Mm -hmm. He knew it was going to impact mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's where so many people are living right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the American Stress Institute did a study that showed 77% of Americans have physical symptoms impacting their body as a result of stress. And one out of every two people, 50%, didn't sleep good last night because of stress. When Jesus said, don't do this, he was saying, don't do this. He was saying, don't hurt yourself. But the way we, we deal with this um, is, is through the means of the relationship. What I can't promise people, and nobody can, this side of heaven, is deliverance from stressful situations. Mm. Yeah. What we can have is what Jesus promised, and that's victory in the midst of the stressful situation. And in the midst of the stressful situation, I can turn to him and moment by moment experience that victory. I have to, in my own life, having experienced this back in 2012, walked through this collapse, reorienting my life, I still today have to moment by moment Okay. Take these things back to the Father because today I'm going to have some stuff happen in my life. I'm going to be on a TV show where I have to <laughs> either respond to that with, oh, my gosh, how am I going to do this? How am I? Or I can say, Father, you've given me this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You've placed me in this position. So, Lord, what do you want to do here? And how do you want to use this for your glory? And when we do that, he takes our stress and he gives us his peace. And I love that Paul said it's the peace of God. He doesn't say it's the peace from God. Mm. It's the peace of God. It's literally God's peace. It's the same peace that Jesus had in the boat asleep, mm. in the <laughs> storm, and the way everybody like else that. is freaking out. That's a, that's a, I like that. Yes. Jesus right? is asleep. Yeah. That's the peace he wants us to have. Yes. That's the peace he's promised us. And when I settle for less than that, I'm settling for less than what he's offered me through that relationship. So it's that abiding relationship where moment by moment, when I start to pick it up, I have to be mindful to take it back mm -hmm. and lay it at his feet mm -hmm. and trust it to him and get that peace. And the watching world needs to see this. Yeah, they, they need yeah, to see this. It's not a remedy. It's a lifestyle. That's it. That's it. Yeah. How are we, how are we doing? How are you doing with the, with your stress? Man, you know, I, I, I love that you said it. It's, it's a lifestyle. That's right. It's a lifestyle being very quick and aware of stress in your life to know that, man, when it's, when it's coming on, I have an opportunity now to respond. How am I going to respond to this? I'm going to give it to the father. I'm going to trust him with all these pieces and let it go. He's given me permission to That's give right. it back to him. That's right. What a relief that we have. But so many of us want to hang on to it, try to figure it out ourselves. And that's when we start to, I start to just Ooh, it, it, it's a heavy load, and I yeah. don't want the load. No. I got enough loads in my life. I don't well, need that here's one. The beauty. He doesn't want uh, you to have no, the load. No, he doesn't. He invites you to put that on him. Right. What Jesus offers us is not the absence of struggle. It's the peace of God in the midst of the struggle 
that distinguishes us as followers of Jesus, that's a witness to a watching world, that Jesus really does make a difference in this thing called life. So you preached this out at Hope Church in Las Vegas. I did, yeah, we yeah. preached the series. Uh, How has it impacted people? We've seen it be used to, to set people free mm -hmm. in their daily lives as they moment by moment pursue intimacy with the Father. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus instructed us in John 15, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Mm -hmm. Apart from me, he said, you can do nothing. He said, if you abide in me and I in you, you bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do. It's that same word, Amen. nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. The problem is we think, he said, apart from me, you can't do big things. Mm. Let it be a big thing. Mm. We all of a sudden pursue intimacy with the Father. Mm. But that's not what he said. He said, apart from me, you can't do anything. <laughs> and if we understand that, and that's what, the, the, what clicked for people in our church is, he doesn't just care about the big stuff. He wants me moment by moment to live in relationship with Him, in fellowship with Him, intimate with Him. He's invited us not into a religion of do's, don'ts, rights, wrongs, rules, and regulations. He's invited us into an intimate love relationship with Himself. And all these things He desires to use to cultivate intimacy with Him. You can't know the peace of God unless you know the God of peace. That's right. A brilliant pastor once taught me that. <laughs> That's a good word. His name was Vance Pittman. That's a good word. It's a simplistic uh, sentence, but so powerful, yeah. so much in that. You cannot know the peace of God in your life, which we all pray for and ask for, unless you have an intimate relationship with That's Jesus right. and knowing who God is first in your life. Then I think all of the other starts to, for me, starts to fall into place. That's right. I will know the peace of God when I know exactly the character and the heart of Jesus in uh, any situation. Yeah, I like to say this, that my emotional health rises and falls based mm. on my time alone with Jesus. When my intimacy with Jesus is right, everything about my emotional health, my mental health rises and mm -hmm. falls based on that. And um, for me, it's about moment by moment walking with him. And that's where, and that's why to anybody who's, you know, watching this today, um, the first step to experiencing this is to know him. Like you can't, you said it, you, you can't know uh, the peace of God apart from knowing the God of peace. You have to know him, but it's not just knowing him. Once you know him, it's about cultivating yes. the relationship with yeah. him. And that's where we have to that's win right. the victory moment by moment. And walking and stepping out in obedience of kind of a girl that is learning that later in life, the obedience, <laughs> <laughs> because I love it. Be obedience for me is tied so closely to blessings. So as I'm starting to walk in obedience, the blessings of God, the peace of God uh, have been surrounding my life. And I'd rather live in a place like that yeah. than a stressed out place. But don't miss this about obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm. So here's the way I heard that for a lot of my Christian life. Yeah. If you love me, yeah. you better do what I say. Ooh. So we think the goal is obedience, oh. but that's not what he said. Yep. Okay. He said, if you love me, mm. <laughs> you'll keep my commandments. Yeah. Yep. The focus was never on obedience. Oh, the focus is that. on intimacy. And as I pursue intimacy, obedience is the fruit, mm. not the focus of my life. The enemy would love for you and me to focus on obedience. You know why? Because wow. we can't do we that can't. in our own strength. <laughs> I heard it the same way, man. Wow. I heard yeah. it the same way I thought I have to prove my love through my obedience. And when you finally get it, wow. now there's freedom. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was just going to say there's, there's freedom. freedom for not just me in that today, but probably many people yeah. hearing I'm stress that. Stress-free. Stressless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. So, so I'd good. I'd like people to get this. Yeah, I would love you to have this book, The Stressless Life. I know it will be, for some of you, life-changing and yeah. will bring a lot of freedom in your life. So when you call and uh, partner with us today, we want to send you this. So request this book and we'll get it out to you right away. But first, I want to show you this amazing piece. Um, well, I was able to go over to this incredible village and see some really heartbreaking things. And I want to share it with you today. Water. Earth's most abundant natural resource. Yet, out of this abundance, only a tiny fraction of it is suitable for drinking. And suitable is a loose definition. This is their only source of water right here. This is his only source of water. And this is where they have to come every day, all the way down here to get their water. I mean, you can look around and you can see that it is very dirty and muddy and there are frogs all over that I actually see at the moment and 
you can see the, the contamination in it. You can see that there has got to be much disease and illness with each sip that they take. While the problem here is serious, the solution is surprisingly simple. And it's already been implemented in this Central American village. Well, this is a time when I don't mind watching them stand here and pour water over their head because I know it's good water. That's you right. Know. This is a place for which we give great, great uh, praise to God and gratitude. But we need to drill hundreds of wells like this all over the world. And you can see, if you can't look at these children, look at their faces, look how happy they are, and understand the importance of clean water, it becomes the center of life, schools, spring up, we want children to get an education, and we want them to come and get healthy, clean drinking water. I give praise and I am so grateful to God for what he has done through this ministry through the years and what he will continue to do. Thank you so much. If you have partnered with us in the past, thank you. Grateful for you. If you've not had a chance to do it, this is a moment I'm going to take to encourage you to join with us in this fight to bring clean water to people that desperately need it. I have been working with this ministry for many, many years on mission trips all over the world. But you know what? That same heart that I had then, the passion for those children is the same heart I have today. I'm a little older, a little wiser, but my passion has not changed and the cause has not changed and the need has not changed. There will always be a need for clean water. And we'll always find those places where we can go to tell those stories and bring them to you and tell you of their great need to help change their lives, to help save their lives, and to bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We get to be a part of that. Would you consider joining us today? We're gonna drill 350 wells this year in 20 nations. And you know what? It takes all of us to be a part of that change. So let me break it down for you. For $48, it will provide water for 10. For 144, it will provide water for 30. And for $4,800, we could go in there and drill a complete well, Randy, that would change the life of so many, about a thousand people in that village yeah. Yeah. for a lifetime. Yeah, and it's interesting because we've been doing this long enough yes. that we know we've seen the averages, we know the overall budget, the average numbers. And so we can say $4,800 will mm -hmm. basically give a lifetime of fresh, clean drinking water to a thousand people. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I think, Tammy, when I see something like this, uh, I see images where there is dirty water. I yeah. see images where children are drinking their only water source. It's right. not out of ignorance uh, right. or not out of, you know, just misbehavior. It's out of not having a choice. Right. I just can't help but think of the story of the Good Samaritan, mm. you know, where mm -hmm. Jesus says to love your neighbor and we wonder who is our neighbor. Well, mm -hmm. it's the person in need. Mm -hmm. And too often it's easy to, to walk right by. Look, I've been the other two guys in that story too. Yeah, I've seen yeah. a need and I haven't filled it. But what we have right now is an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm gonna pause for just a moment and I'm gonna share the love of Christ with someone, not just in word, but in deed. Mm -hmm. I want to show them the gospel, demonstrate the love mm -hmm. of Christ. And clean water is a very simple way to do it. And yet it's one of those most basic things that can have a profound impact, not just on the life of a few, but on the lives of many. And that's why it's, it's a privilege, it's an honor to go to people in the name of Jesus and mm -hmm. say, this need is filled. Mm -hmm. We want to fill a lot of needs. We've, we've got a big goal, 350 wells across 20 nations. We want you to be a part of it. Will you go to the phone or will you go online and make the best gift you can? If you've given, as Tammy said, if you've given before, thank you. Mm -hmm. Please give again. Mm -hmm. If this is your first time to really consider it, don't walk by. Mm -hmm. Pause for just a moment. There's no... There's no gift that's too small when we come together. Will you go online or go to the phone? Do it now, I pray that you will. Every day, thousands of lives are lost to waterborne disease, and nearly half of those are children under the age of five. 
Through Mission Water for Life, you can give mothers hope and children a future as we provide clean, life-giving water for thousands of children and their families before it's too late. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15 and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With a gift of any amount, we'll send you Daughter, written by James and Betty's granddaughter, Lainey Renee. This insightful book invites all girls and women to walk in the freedom of their God-given identity and embrace who they really are. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request the Great is the Lord decorative blanket, featuring the words of Psalm 145.3, this beautiful blanket is perfect for comfort in cold weather and a reminder of your help with Water for Life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and request our new bronze sculpture, A Cup of Water, inspired by Jesus' words in Mark 9, 41. Please call, write, or make your gift online. What a great opportunity to be life and love for people that need it. I hope you'll go to the phone, go online, make the best gift you can. You can make a difference, and we love it when you partner with, with us. And if you want Vance's book, The Stressless Life, do ask for it today when you make your gift towards Water for Life. And Vance, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, I, I appreciate just the wisdom that you've shared with us. I want people to know about what you're doing in addition to the church, because you, yeah. you're, you're part-time with the church, but the SEND network, quickly, yeah. what are you guys doing to plant more churches? Yeah, around so here? Hope, we planted Hope, and then out of Hope Church in Las Vegas, we started about 80 churches out of our church in the Western United States. Yeah. From there, um, I was employed by what's called SEND Network. It's the largest church planning network in North America. And from the platform of Hope, now I work for SEND Network, and we are about planting churches all across. It's, it's churches, planting churches everywhere for everyone. Last year, we started 745 new wow. churches across North America wow. and are believing God for a church planting movement that will see the kingdom of God expand again in North America. I so, love it. I love it. Well, if you keep sharing the wisdom of God that you share in this book, I know it's going to bear good fruit. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you both for having yes. me today. Thank you, Pastor, so much for being here. And thank you for teaching me on a new perspective of obedience today. <laughs> it was really good for me. Thank awesome. you so much. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time on Life Today. I'm not going to pray because you're going to do whatever you want anyways. Faith Yuri Cho shares how her friendship with God was strengthened. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.